Follow the Bible in a Year with Jack Graham podcast today. Begin your New Year's resolution with the Bible and see why millions have already started Bible in a Year with Jack Graham. This podcast was created to help you solidify your faith as you experience the story of the Bible through live action recordings and emotional orchestral music. Listen to Bible in a Year with Jack Graham on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts app, or wherever you get your podcasts. You know, I go to combat and then I'm about to die every day and I'm just like David calling on the Lord to... I'm in the valley of the shadow of death. And, and of course, it's you come running back to the faithful father. And so it just, if I'm being honest, it's kind of my story. Welcome to the Jesus Calling Podcast. In life, we can't escape adversity. We're bound to end up with some bumps and bruises along the way. Maybe it's because of rough beginnings or difficult relationships with loved ones or unexpected circumstances that inevitably come our way. Having faith in God doesn't mean you won't face challenges and difficulties. It means we can know we won't have to face those battles alone. Like the Apostle Paul, who called upon God and rejoiced while being imprisoned, he constantly tried to find the blessing during the pain of being captive. Through his example, we can see that when we put our trust in God and focus on gratitude, we'll find strength to get through the rockier times of our lives. Our guests this week have each faced significant trials and chose to trust God during those times. Each of them found that facing negative experiences in this way equips them with the tools to face future challenges in a healthier way. Marine veteran Tom Schumann, who served in one of the bloodiest battles of the war in Afghanistan, opens up about staring death in the face daily and how reading the Psalms reminded him he wasn't alone. Teaching pastor Allie Patterson thought she had life figured out at an early age. She did all the right things, but quickly discovered early on her career in her marriage that there were cracks in the foundation she carefully laid and found herself searching for solace outside of her marriage. It was in the dark hours of almost losing everything that she left her future in God's hands, giving her the courage to try to restore what had been broken. Let's start with Tom's story. My name is Tom Schumann. I am a dad. I'm a Marine. I'm a uh, husband, son, I write a little bit, and I'm an infantryman and a follower of Christ. We were extremely poor, and everybody in my family lived in a two-bedroom apartment. I never considered service. I don't have a family history of service. I didn't grow up watching G.I. Joe or Apocalypse Now or anything like that. When 9-11 happened, I probably couldn't have told you the four branches of service. It was just 9-11 happened. It was the end of the, you know, the age of innocence. That was my first call towards service is, was my experience in combat where everything is bad is happening all the time. And you just have to figure out what you're going to do with two bad options. You know, it's the series of unfortunate events and you have to make the best of all these unfortunate events. There was a period in my life in 2010 where every day I was certain I was going to die. And it, statistically, it was likely. That at the rate that we were taking casualties, at the rate that people were getting wounded, at the, at the, the amount of firefights that were in, the amount of uh, improvised explosive devices that we were striking. It's, at that time, I was reading the Psalms. I went back to Afghanistan a year later and I was alone. I was out on a remote outpost where I was the only American and I was advising Afghans. And again, uh, but I, I was alone, but I wasn't, you know, I was never alone and, and I was never abandoned in the midst of the violence in the midst of the death uh, that was abounding and all around me. I still had something good that I could hold on to. And I, yeah, I don't know, I don't think I make it through those periods of my life without it. Life is little bits of glimpses of what hell will be like and what heaven will be like. And I think war is just a magnification of all these kind of human experiences of, of the heavens and hells that we go through here on earth. And you just get to see it in a greater magnitude. And so you get to see the waste and the depravity and the horror 
in a, in a very unique way, but you also get to see the love and the conviction and the mercy and the grace. And, uh, and you get to see that love, that love, the greatest form of love played out right in front of you. And, and it, it is for something that I'll always be grateful for the opportunity to have these experiences that I've had. Everybody in life is going to get ambushed. Everybody in life is going to have something traumatic happen. A cancer, car accident, a miscarriage. Something is going to happen that, that we weren't expecting. And how can we be more resilient as we move through life so that these ambushes cause less damage? How can we be more resilient? How can we recover from these things? How can we get to a place where we have gratitude for adversity and say, this adversity shaped me and made me a better man? You know, there's so much fear in this world. Everyone is so afraid. And uh, I just, you know, in the Bible, it's fear not, fear not, do not be afraid, fear not, fear not. You know, physical courage is very easy. It's just when, when, when something has to happen and you have to expose yourself to danger, there's no, it's no problem. It's just like, hey, I've got to go help this person that I love, so I have to go do the thing that I have to do. And, and also, you know, physical courage as a Christian, I think is incredibly easy. Moral courage is a lot more challenging. Doing the right thing, consistently doing the right thing. The moral courage piece is, is really tough. You look at someone like Paul, who is rejoicing while in prison. And I think a lot of that is, as a Christian, you know, if so long as you have your faith, you, you know, you can take, as Paul is such a great example of the ability to, to be persecuted, but still to rejoice. And, and I think that's something worth studying and, and trying to incorporate. I've had a father who's been always faithful when I've been uh, consistently wandered on my journey. My faith and my father, you know, always buttressed me, always helped me maintain my sanity. Without my faith, I don't know how I get through those experiences. It's a, it's such a deep well that I can continue to, to fill my cup from. To learn more about Tom Schumann, follow him on social media and be sure to check out his book, Always Faithful, at your favorite retailer. Stay tuned to Allie Patterson's story after a brief message. Follow the Bible in a Year with Jack Graham podcast today. Begin your New Year's resolution with the Bible and see why millions have already started Bible in a Year with Jack Graham. This podcast was created to help you solidify your faith as you experience the story of the Bible through live action recordings and emotional orchestral music. Hear the Bible come to life and learn the Word of the Lord. With over 7 million downloads, Bible in a Year with Jack Graham is the fastest growing Christian podcast. Do not be frightened, the angel reassured. I have come with good news. In the town of Bethlehem lies a baby. He is swaddled securely in a manger at the inn stables. This child is the Messiah, the Lord, the Savior of the world and redemption of mankind. Listen to Bible in a Year with Jack Graham on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts app, or wherever you get your podcasts. Our next guest is Pastor Allie Patterson, who vulnerably opens up about a situation in her marriage where she sought something outside of her marriage, breaking trust with she and her husband and shattering the commitment she had made to their family and community. With pain and humility, Allie cried out to God for help and eventually found the courage to share her truth, even though she knew it would have a devastating impact. My name is Allie Patterson, and I am currently living in Cincinnati, Ohio. I am a wife of 20, almost 24 years. I have four kids who are almost all teenagers now. I serve as a teaching pastor at Crossroads Church out of Cincinnati, Ohio. And I love to teach and speak in many different settings. In my early 20s, I really built a foundation for my life based on what I was taught. 
I was a pretty good person. I wished people well. I genuinely loved the people in my life. I went to school. I got good grades. I tried to work hard. I wanted to be successful. I wanted to be well liked. I had a corporate career, got kind of a great job coming out of school. And it looked from the outside like I had built my life correctly. I had a wonderful guy and I had gotten a good running start into my adult life. And yet I started to see that maybe there were some things that weren't strong at the very foundation of my life. I started to see cracks in my ability to manage conflict, to tell the truth in all circumstances, to create relationship with people that were really different than me. I just saw that some things in my life were, there were weak places. There were shifting sand under what I had built. My husband today, we married when I was straight out of college and he was coming out of law school. We got married and we were putting together the life that we had planned. And it turned out that we hadn't really thought a lot about how to actually be married. We loved each other. We wanted a life together. And that's about where it ended. And so off I go into my corporate career and I start meeting all these people. And I'm also being exposed to a lot of things that I just wasn't prepared for. And one of those things was just relationships with all kinds of other people, specifically men. And I got into an affair with a man that was ahead of me in the company. And it burned everything to the ground. It truly did. It exposed who I was being. It exposed all the cracks in my marriage. It exposed all the cracks in my character. It truly burned everything that I had tried to build to the ground. During this time in my life, I was just a pariah to a lot of people. I was that woman. I was the one who did the thing you're never supposed to do. And I was the worst one. One of the things that I first had to do was tell the truth to myself. And very quickly in that same period of time to tell the truth to God. And the moment I told myself the truth, I was on a run. I'm a runner. I love to run. It's a space where I can reset, where I can be alone. Sometimes I talk to God. Sometimes I'm just with myself. And on one of those runs, I finally stopped in the middle of the sidewalk and I hit my knees and I just said out loud, I can't do this anymore. I, I can't live like this. It's too dissonant. It's not me, it, but it is me. I, I can't do this anymore. And I said to God words that had been bouncing around in my head for a long time, weeks at that point. And I said out loud to God, okay, get me out however you need to. And the two little words I said to him were, break me. And so I said, I want to be who you made me to be. I want a real life. I want a real marriage. I want a real relationship with you. And I've ruined it all. Break me. Come get me. And new life really began when I just kept walking that direction, no matter what it cost me. When I confessed the affair to my husband, every single time I took a step in what I thought was the direction of truth, and God and life, it cost me something for a long time. When we were trying desperately to seek God and to figure out, could we actually build something new? Could we actually have a foundation that would stand? Like, could Jesus help us? The world was telling us, no, it's not possible. You're young. You don't even have any kids. Just you know, cut and run. Who cares? You know, get out. Don't trust her ever again. Don't believe you can ever rebuild. I think I felt a sense that God was angry with me or disapproved of me before I actually started talking to him. You know, when it's in the dark and in the quiet, we can tell ourselves these stories. And definitely my story was, you're a terrible person. You're a terrible wife. You're a terrible friend. You're a terrible employee. And I heard these loud, awful accusations all the time. 
But as soon as I began to actually engage God, as soon as I actually went to him, surprisingly, he broke through the, that. And when I was at my worst, God began sending me people that would tell me, not only am I here with you, but I do not agree. I began to feel hope and I began to see light again when God began sending me his people. One of those moments happened in the most unexpected place. I almost lost my job over this situation because it was a relationship that happened in the workplace. I was terribly ashamed, terribly alone. And the one person you definitely don't want to see, um, if you're in a situation like this in a workplace, is the HR person. And so the HR woman and I were in this tiny little room and we were having this very painful, uncomfortable meeting and a couple of people left the room. And she looked up at me and she said, Allie, can I pray for you? And my head snapped up and I had just been looking down crying and feeling the way you might imagine I felt. She had no idea, no idea I was a person of faith and no reason to suspect that I would be. And yet God placed her in that room and she prayed for me. And I thought the grace of God is here. When I encounter someone today, that needs desperately to know you are not your worst moment. You are not your darkest hour. You are not your greatest sin. The only thing that I have to offer them is to be honest about my own story. All of those stories and accusations and awful thoughts about who I really was, you know, the voice deep inside me that was saying, you are beyond reach. You've done something that's too awful. That is not the voice of God. And the more I actually came to him in prayer and began to read his word again, the more I did that, the more I realized it was a lot easier to believe that maybe I wasn't those things after I started to talk to God. Devotionals can be an awesome way to connect with God. So I think I had the very first Jesus Calling devotional when it came out. And the thing that grabbed me about the voice inside of that book was that somebody was stepping into the gap and saying things that I need to hear from God. Sovereign God, your word tells me that you guide me in the way of wisdom and lead me along straight paths. Yet sometimes I feel so confused, struggling to find the right way forward. I've tried so many things and I've been so hopeful at times but my hope-filled paths have led to disappointment. I'm thankful that you fully understand how hard my journey has been. Help me to walk in the way of wisdom, trusting you no matter what happens in my life. I know that steadfast trust in you is essential for finding and following the right path. As I go along my journey, I encounter many things that seem random or wrong, yet I believe that you are fitting all of them into a comprehensive plan for good, your master plan. I'm learning to walk by faith, not by sight, trusting that you are indeed leading me along straight paths. In your great, wise name, Jesus, amen. To learn more about Allie Patterson, visit AllyPatterson.com and check out her new book, how to Stay Standing, Three Essential Practices for Building a Faith That Lasts, wherever books are sold. If you'd like to hear more stories about gratitude and adversity, check out our interview with Max Licato. Next time on the Jesus Calling Podcast, we'll hear from husband and wife team, Fox and Rob Richardson, who endured 21 years apart when Rob was incarcerated. Leaning heavily on their faith and their love for one another, Fox raised their sons alone and continued to fight for Rob's freedom, knowing that God had better plans for them and chose not to be defined by their past mistakes. I don't place my joy in the good opinions of others. I have to place my joy in the Lord and God's redemption for me. God's ability to heal me, God's ability to use the wretchedness of me for God's highest good and then make peace.
Want to hear more inspirational stories of people who have been changed by a closer walk with God? Then subscribe today to the Jesus Calling Podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And please be sure to leave a review, which helps us reach and inspire others with these stories. Plus, if you like seeing our guests as well as hearing them, you can find video interviews available on our YouTube channel at youtube.com Jesus Calling Book on Facebook and on the Jesus Calling Instagram page.